While electric vehicles are certainly a lot cheaper to run during their lifetime than internal combustion engine vehicles, thanks to reduced service costs, they aren't as cheap to make. Even specialist electric automakers like Tesla have yet to bring electric vehicle production costs down to a level where economies of scale really kick in to enable truly affordable models. While Tesla largely chose to fund its development costs by selling zero emission vehicle credits, taking out loans and selling stock, carrying out engineering drivetrain development for other automakers and, of course, producing high-end cars that could then help fund development of cheaper models, it took a very long time to get to a point where profitability was even a possibility. So-called traditional automakers, that's ones who have mainly up to this point produced internal combustion engine vehicles, have started to make the switch towards electric vehicles, promising a range of new battery electric and electrified models in the next few years. Porsche is one such automaker, and while it, its sibling company Audi, and its parent company Volkswagen are still reeling from the Dieselgate debacle, Porsche is still one of the most profitable brands on the market today, with last year's profit on every single car averaging $17,000. $250. You'd expect then that Porsche would be in the best possible place as any automaker to really start investing in electric vehicle technology, and indeed it has. But even Porsche and its massive profit margin on every new car it sells can't underwrite the development costs of its upcoming Taycan electric sedan and subsequent Taycan variants without seeing a massive cut in its bottom line. Which is why its board of directors have set a heady goal of improving its operating profit, a total of $6.8 billion, that's about 6 billion euro over the next eight years. The goal, to use that extra money, about 750 million euro every year from now until 2025, Five, to fund all of the new research development that is needed to bring a new range of electric cars to market. That 2025 goal? Well, it coincides with Porsche's goal of having as half of all of its sales electric or hybrid, fueled by the belief that building internal combustion engines from 2030 onwards won't be economically viable in Europe due to the Paris Climate Accord. Insiders at Porsche, who spoke to Bloomberg over the weekend on condition of anonymity, said that Porsche's first all-electric model, the 2020 Porsche Taycan, which is due next year, will likely cost between six and ten thousand euro more to produce for Porsche than its traditional models. Rather than pass that cost on to consumers, the company is planning to absorb the cost, meaning that it needs an additional six to ten thousand dollars per car sold, even though its current profit margin is so high. Rather than simply rely on internal combustion vehicle sales to fund this development, as some other automakers are already doing, Bloomberg was told by its sources at Porsche that it plans on some big cost-cutting measures inside the company in order to make it more efficient and less wasteful. That particular plan isn't so unusual in the automotive world. Tesla engaged in some restructuring during the second and third quarters of this year in order to reduce its operating costs and maximize potential profit. And frankly, it's one of the many reasons that have helped Tesla have a profitable third quarter this year. Porsche may have more cash on hand than Tesla, but it wants to stay that way, hence the plan. It's not clear what else will be involved in the efficiencies and cost-cutting measures, but expect some reshuffling in terms of employees, as well as perhaps a drop in the number of internal combustion engine options or trim options in current models. In addition to all of this, Porsche insiders say that the company plans to set up some new revenue streams to help it bring in more money to fund that electric vehicle development program. These are likely going to include digital services, which will be offered to existing customers as value-add features on new cars. While details have not been discussed, I think it's likely that these will include in-car services and subscriptions, such as live map data, smart home integration, and perhaps improved remote telematics. But it's also possible that there may be a premium car share service on the way, although honestly, I'm not sure this will necessarily sit well with Porsche's primary market segment. Why doesn't Porsche just bite the bullet and make the transition and then rebuild its profits once it's got battery electric vehicles off the ground? Well, simply put, like any large company, profits are good for shareholders. And the more profits a company has, the easier it is for that company to both make money, but also to borrow money if it needs to.
It's not just Porsche, of course. Every traditional automaker seeking to follow Tesla into the electric car marketplace, either with a can't beat them join them attitude or a will take Tesla down attitude, is facing the same challenge. How to fund its electric and autonomous vehicle development programs. Unless those automakers are willing to go through the decade of hell that Tesla experienced to get where it is today, hint, most, if not all of them, would refuse, then there needs to be another solution. Over the next few months and years, we'll find out just how each automaker plans on tackling that very specific problem. That's it. Don't forget to give us your thumbs up or your thumbs down. Leave a comment. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell below. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, without whom we'd never be able to produce all of this daily content for you to all enjoy. You can join them for yourselves if you haven't yet at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.